Hi! Seeing as so many of you have asked me multiple times over Instagram and on this channel and my blog and all over the place basically about my houseplants, I thought that today was a good opportunity to give you a little plant tour. Just to give you a little kind of heads up I guess. <laughs> There are over a hundred plants in this house. I'm gonna try and show you all of them and a little bit about where they all are. So you can kind of see the kind of conditions I guess they're in, the like light levels and placement near windows and stuff like that. Now, it would be the longest video in the known universe if I gave you, I don't know, a comprehensive list of requirements of every single plant. So I'm not gonna do that because you might die of boredom, but I will try and give you a quick overview of what certain types of plant like and kind of my tips and tricks really, because I'm no expert. I've just become a little bit obsessed with my house plant babies and I can't stop adding to the collection. So I hope you enjoy this little tour. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I will do my very best to answer them all. So, let's go. Starting right here in my studio then, I have this enormous Pothos, who grows like a weed. He is massive, um, really, really easy to care for, really forgiving, doesn't necessarily need to be in blinding bright sunlight. He's quite a way away from a window, even though it is a big south-facing one. And he just likes lots of water when you notice the soil is dry, really. Not fussy, really pretty. You can trail him everywhere. This guy is a Bengal fig. He is one of my newest plant babies. So he's just sprouted this teeny tiny leaf and he looks like he might have another on the way. But I just love the like beautiful striking pattern on the leaves of these guys. Um, and as with all figs, they are a little bit fussy. Um, you need to make sure they are kept watered. They're not as forgiving, uh, but they also don't like being soaking wet. This one has really lovely like, um, you can't really see it on the camera, but the, the leaves feel like soft and velvety. They're almost furry. It's pretty amazing. So he's a fig. These are some kind of like babies. This was a uh, cutting of a spider plant that a friend gave me who's just getting enormous already. Um, this little chap is furry. I don't know if you can see it very well, but he's furry and purple. Um, and he's called a gynura, and that was from a uh, plant shop in Amsterdam. They gave me a little cutting, which was sweet. Um, this is one of my baby pilias that I plucked off the big mama pilia. Pilias are all over the house, so you'll see a million of these. Um, this looks a lot like a cheese plant, but it's not. Um, it's a... can't even pronounce the name, but I'm going to write it on the screen. <laughs> But they're really pretty and they're like climbing, climbing vines. These guys are some of my faves. These are all different types of begonia. Begonias have super lovely like silvery spots all over their leaves. You can kind of, you can kind of see on this guy. Um, but they're literally metallic. They're amazing. This little guy is a variegated rubber plant. Uh, he's growing really big actually. He was tiny when I bought him. Uh, and these guys like to be kept moist and they also like being spritzed with um, water to keep the humidity up. They're quite fussy. If they don't get enough water, their leaves uh, drop and they go a little bit brown like this. This is one of the first leaves um, from when we first got it. But the newer ones are looking much happier. This guy is a big fiddly fig. I'm a bit obsessed with fiddle leaf figs. I've got a pilia here. This was a little tiny one I plucked off the big one that's growing quite big now. Uh, and this is one of my favourites ever. This is my biggest fiddle leaf fig. And he is stunning. He's really new um, and also really expensive. Uh, really expensive. So probably not one for people that are new to houseplants because they're quite fussy. And yeah, it would be devastating if he dies. Please pray for him, I hope he doesn't. Um, but I've put him in one of these self-watering planters 
The brand is called Lechuza and they have this really handy water indicator that shows you when they need a drink basically. It's got a minimum and a maximum and it means that you can basically just fill the reservoir up and the plant takes as much as it needs. So if they're fussy like these guys are, uh, it's a bit of a cheats way of keeping them happy, really. This pillia here is the original one that all of the other pillias in the house have come from and he's got all these babies that I need to pluck off actually. It's the longest windy man. And I got him originally with like two leaves on him from a charity shop on the Isle of Wight years and years ago when I was um, visiting my good pal Harriet. In the spare room, we have a little Momo with his cushion of himself. Um, these guys are Oh, tired boy. These guys are all big succulents that I got from a Super Ace Nursery in Somerset yesterday. Those guys are pretty beaut and really big. And um, they were all outside actually. So these, some of them might end up in the garden, some of them in the house. They got soaked in the monsoon rains that were at the nursery yesterday. So they're in here in the window drying out. I also have a, another fiddle leaf fig. Um, this guy I only put in here a couple of days ago because he was in the studio, but he was getting dwarfed by the two biggies. So I've popped him here and turned him the opposite way to how he was uh, facing towards. So hopefully he'll grow towards the window that way and stop being quite so bendy. This guy was from eBay, I think. But this, because it's a single stem, uh, spindly baby version of the fiddle leaf figs, um, he wasn't very expensive at all. Uh, but he's grown really quickly and he's looking pretty healthy. This guy here is a succulent again. He's an Aeonium, another new purchase yesterday. Uh, and this guy is another begonia. This guy is a begonia maculata and he arrived in the post pretty badly damaged. I often order plants um, online and sometimes unfortunately they come in not great condition having travelled through the post. Um, so he's looking a bit in the wars but he does have some really lovely new leaf growth. <laughs> so I'm hopeful that he'll make a full recovery. Love these guys so much. They're just stunning. I just love the patterns on the leaves. Another fussy plant a little bit. They like to be kept fairly moist and they also do like a misting to keep the humidity up. Uh, and when they're happy, they produce like loads of leaves. They're really fast growers. In the master bedroom, I have a pretty unhappy guinea chestnut tree. He used to be massive in the old flat and really loved it. And I don't think he's enjoying being here because he's dropped quite a lot of leaves but he's really big. Also have lots of cheese plants. This guy is a bit of an odd one. He's only got three leaves, but he's kind of cool. Um, this guy I rescued from Lidl, um, looking really sad with like burndy leaves. And he's just literally in the last few weeks sprouted out these two new big ones. Cheese plants again aren't very fussy. They like to be near a window but it doesn't have to be direct sunlight. This is a north facing window. And they just like humidity as well so give them a spritz, make sure they're watered. This one is pretty rare. Um, this is a variegated Monstera. Now he again arrived in the post in not the best condition. But he has been growing new leaves even though they're a little bit oddly shaped and dwarfed so I'm not sure whether he needs repotting perhaps but he's still growing and the leaves on these are just stunning. I wanted one forever. I just love them. So I'm hoping he grows big and strong. Poor little guy. And then we've just got a really big variegated rubber plant that seems to be quite happy here. And the room is quite bright but he isn't right next to a window. Uh, but he's producing lots of new leaves and I give him, like the other one, lots of spritzes with water to keep the humidity up. In the bathroom I have lots of uh, moisture loving plants, so this pretty fern I bought yesterday. This asparagus fern here, who really, really likes humidity, so I spritz him literally all the time and also flick him with water from the tap. Another fern here on the side of the bath. This guy was actually from home base, 
so he was pretty cheap. And a Monstera Oblica, uh, another form of cheese plant, which is a vine one, and he is growing really big. <laughs> and he's looped over the curtain there. Um, and I learned another baby pillia and another begonia. Uh, oh, and in the corner there is a mother-in-law's tongue, a Sansevieria snake plant. So that's the bathroom, babes. Down here in the living room, I've got a million plants. Uh, this is another north-facing bay window. It's directly below the master bedroom, and this is like cheese plant central. So another big guy here. This guy is an absolute beast that needs repotting um, that I got for four pounds as a cutting from a plant sale at Jack's work, which I've never seen ever again. There was just this one plant sale at Christmas one year, but I don't know if you can see the scale, but the leaves are huge, um, really huge. So he's amazing, and in the last few weeks he's put out two new leaves and another one as well, so he must like this spot, but look at these roots. He needs repotting really badly. They're like bulging out of the water reservoir. Behind these guys, I've got some succulents. This guy's just starting to flower, which is nice. Another guy here, a little selection of suckers there. Um, another baby pillia, <laughs> a baby pillia that's got massive. S poor cacti that didn't make it. Cat knocked him off the side and he's died. My little cute elephant planter with lots of different succulents in it and another baby elephant with more suckers in it. And then on our plant shelf, succulents, purple heart, vine, baby cheese plant, that there is an oxalis. Um, you can't really see because of the way the light is but it's really amazing like deep purpley maroon leaves. Succulents, 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 and then my first fiddle leaf fig, uh, who I got from Ikea years ago and I've never seen them since. But he's like the spindliest little stick, uh, but he's going mad in this window. He's grown so much. These leaves are huge, so I think he's happy there. Uh, this guy is an umbrella plant, I think. Rescued this guy that was dying from um, Lidl in the winter as well. And he's got lots and lots of new leaves. Seems pretty unfussy. I water him when I remember. We like him a lot. It'll be interesting to see if I can keep this little bub alive because um, I bought him yesterday from the plant sale and this guy too. And Alocasia and Colocasia are quite fussy and they like lots of humidity and I didn't manage to keep this guy alive when I bought him a year or so ago, but they're so pretty, so I'm gonna try my hardest. I just love them. These are proper tropical plants, um, so they're quite specialist. Another cheese plant. So up here, basically biggie cheese plant again. This is a donkey's tail succulent, a sedum, and I love him. Um, he seems to be doing okay here. In the flat they had a lot more sunlight uh, because the windows were floor to ceiling and all south facing so everybody got loads of light but he seems to be doing okay. And another uh, Monstera Oblica that's going a bit mad um, and he's really 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 big. <sighs> and another Spidey. On the mantelpiece I have some more succulent babes. I have a big begonia uh, on the fireplace here, pretty unfussy, obviously isn't here when the wood burner is on, <laughs> only in the summer. And then I also have a little baby pillia again over here because we're in the middle of the room now um, and we're quite a distance from the actual windows. There aren't many plants on this shelf, um, just some kind of hardy succulents that are less craving of direct sunlight like most. Again, nothing here because it's too far away from a window. Got a little fig plant there. That's a normal edible fig plant. Little bobby cacti. 
This is a variegated Monstera again, like in the bedroom, that I got, uh, well, I asked permission to take a cutting of, but from a restaurant in Amsterdam where they had an enormous one, uh, and this leaf is new. So he looks like he's doing okay. Not much variegation on this one, but um, we'll see how this little bub does. Another guinea chestnut and another one there. So those guys are here. This window's south facing and gets loads of light. So I have plenty of succulents and also all of my orchids really seem to love this window. So they've just been flowering for ages and ages and ages. More succulents. Uh, these guys are sugared almond succulents. Patrophytum oviferum, I think. But I love them. They're like squidgy beans. And more suckers, more suckers, more suckers, more suckers, a little sad orchid. And then this poor palm <laughs> that was left outside in the frost, Gareth, that I rescued from my friend's house. Poor little thing, look at it. It was literally completely like this when I took it from him, um, but now it appears to be doing okay. There's lots of new growth, like it is. Uh, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping he'll do all right here. It looks like he's, it looks like he's doing okay. But these guys are really easy to look after as well, and they're nice big plants. I think this guy was from Ikea. And a tiny little sucker here. So here I've got like a little plant nursery um, hospital, I guess. Ones that have either got bugs or not done so well or been knocked. They're kind of on this windowsill in the kitchen recovering. <laughs> There's various different types of succulents. Uh, this heart vine, which is going a bit mad and needs to find a home hanging somewhere. Not sure where I'll put him. And then this poor string of, string of pearls that did not do very well, but appears to have some new growth. So here's hoping he'll be okay. Another big begonia. Um, this was sent as a replacement to the one that arrived super damaged uh, because it literally didn't look like it was gonna survive. Uh, and he's arrived in a better condition. Uh, so hopefully he'll thrive too. Seems to like it on this spot in the windowsill um, where he gets not direct light, but quite bright light. This guy is another oxalis, like the massive one I tried to show you in the lounge. But you can kind of see it's like triangular purple leaves. They're really pretty and I love these guys. They just sprout more and more little leaves and these tiny delicate purple trumpet flowers. And then over here on the kitchen windowsill I have a geranium. I have this little bonsai from Ikea more pilias, <laughs> this little cactus in a cute Atelier Stella pot, another cacti, a peperomia, a variegated one that's really pretty, again really easy to look after, really forgiving, another donkey's tail succulent but this is a little baby one, this guy is a bear's paw succulent because these look like little bear's paws, and this is a variegated one. Um, and I just love, love, love these plants. They're so pretty and so cute. Another Echeveria, another sucker in another Atelier Stella pot that I love, um, and more succulents. Just more succulents, basically. Another Pilia. Uh, this is a type of Peperomia, and a cutting that I took yesterday uh, of a cute little vine um, plant that I'm hoping to root in some water here. So there you have it, my insanely large collection of houseplants. Apologies for calling every single one of them this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. I don't know why I refer to them all as males. Very strange, but just noticed I do that when I was watching back the footage I just took. Um, anyway, quick fire tips for you because that might have all been a bit overwhelming. So. Easy, super easy, super, super easy houseplants to look after. Number one would be spider plants. Really unfussy, don't need bright light. Are pretty forgiving with watering uh, and look really pretty and shoot out little babies that you can pluck off and replant and share. Next on a scale of easies, I would say is uh, pilia plants. They're a bit hard to get hold of. They're becoming more um, readily available. Uh, if you know someone that has one, 
maybe ask them for a little a little cutting or a pup as you call them because they sprout out from the soil and you can pluck those off and propagate them easily. These guys need lots of water but you can tell when they need a watering because their leaves get a little bit droopy. Um, and also I would recommend maybe, again I mentioned before, Lechuza planters, but these ones are cheaper ones from eBay uh, and they just have like a little stick that uh, kind of tells you how much water is in a reservoir and that can help you keep on top of watering. Moving on to like another easy to look after plant, um, similarly. Cheese plants, uh, as you saw I've got loads of them, this one's one of the variegated ones that is harder to come by, but cheese plants again don't need direct bright light, uh, they like lots of water and humidity, um, but they're not fussy, um, they're pretty easy going little guys and they look amazing, especially when they get big, and when I talk about spritzing the plants I use this, uh, this is just a plant mister. Uh, press this down and spray a nice fine mist of water on everybody. Uh, raises the humidity uh, for plants that like that. Plants that like humidity and are insano fussy, so maybe not for the faint hearted. Things like this guy, the asparagus fern, and any ferns really. Uh, I mist this guy at least once a day, uh, and you can't ever let the soil dry out. They like to be kept moist literally all the time, or they will go yellow and crispy and die. But they do look beautiful, so you know, if you can commit to giving these guys a mist and keeping them moist, then they look stunning, so give them a go. And they don't like bright direct light, they like a nice shaded spot. That's why mine are quite enjoy being in the bathroom. Succulents are really, really easy to care for. People kill them with kindness all of the time. <laughs> the most common questions I get is like, why is my succulent gone black at the base and the leaves are dropping off? That's normally because the roots are rotten and they've been overwatered. So they don't like sitting in water at all. Doesn't mean they don't like any water, but I would err on the side of caution with watering them and um, water them less uh, as a rule rather than more. So I probably in the summer water my succulents once a week, but basically the soil has to be bone dry before you give them another drink. Um, and they're really good at telling you when they do actually need water because the leaves go a little bit wrinkled. So they need lots of sunlight. People buy them and they put them in indirect light and then they go all leggy. This is what happens when they're not in enough sunlight. The stem becomes really long and the leaves are really spread apart. So that's a fairly unhappy succulent. He's living on my mantelpiece at the moment, which is not close enough to a window at all. And if they can get direct sunlight, um, literally the sun's shining on them for most of the day, that's when they'll grow happiest. So this guy lives in a south facing window with all the orchids downstairs in the dining room and he gets light all day. And so he's grown with like no gaps between the leaves, nice and compact, looks really healthy. So that's a happy succulent. So yeah, it just give them as much light as you can humanly give them. Uh, and then begonias look really pretty, but again, like the ferns, they're on the uh, higher care scale, I guess, because they like misting and they drink a lot of water and they don't like to dry out. And they're really fussy. If you let them dry out, they drop all of their leaves. Um, you can bring them back quite often, but yeah, they, they show their stress really quickly. So a little bit more of a fussy plant that maybe is not good for beginners. So yeah, those are some of my faves, those are some tips, questions, hit me up, I hope you liked it, I hope you don't think I'm totally crazy, and uh, I'll be back with a normal vlog post super soon. Thanks for tuning in, bye!